Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jim Jaquetta. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the uh, EVP of Engineering and CTO of Vitovation. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing how to eliminate or avoid some of the pain points uh, when you're deploying an IPTV and digital signage system. There's uh, quite a few uh, gotchas or, or mistakes or, or features uh, that are really needed uh, to deploy a system properly and legally. And I'll get into some of these uh, uh, pitfalls and, and hopefully uh, you guys will have some uh, takeaways to help you uh, avoid these, these issues or pain points. So um, why IPTV? Um, you know, typically in the typical installation, we're replacing the uh, older, more traditional cable TV or RF coaxial uh, uh, distribution system. Uh, we're getting rid of all those bulky cables, line amplifiers, um, um, you know, just, just the, the old school approach to distributing television. And uh, new constructions, new buildings, uh, the architects and designers are just not specifying old RF cable in the buildings and new installs. Um, you know, the, the, the buildings will be loaded with uh, uh, CAT6 or CAT7 or, or LAN, LAN uh, uh, cabling and no RF cabling for, for television. So we really have to go uh, IPTV or distributing television on the network is really the only choice. Let me ask you guys uh, uh, a question. Um, I have a quick poll here. Um, are, are many of you guys, uh, uh, many of you folks out there are already using uh, IPTV or digital signage of some sort? Um, um, just like to know the, the, the statistics. Um, just kind of see where you guys are at. Looks like uh, a lot of you are using some sort of digital signage, but looks like uh, you either don't have a system or your um, um, Oh, no, that's these you guys are voting. Okay, great. So let me let me show you guys the uh, uh, the results. Um, so let me see here. I think I got to close it. Oh, yeah, then share. So uh, um, you guys can see the uh, see the statistics. So uh, um, you know, it looks like uh, the majority of you guys are using signage. Uh, some of you are using a combined system and and a good 40% of you are, are, are don't don't have a system. So um, <clears throat> um, certainly reach out to us uh, after the uh, the session if you'd like to uh, uh, update your system or deploy a new system. So let me uh, let me see here. I got uh, here we go. Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Bear me one second here. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, why switch from, from RF uh, or, or coax? So, um, as I mentioned, you know, we're going to distribute on the corporate network. Um, uh, sometimes that scares the IT department. Uh, so if we're going to deploy an IPTV or digital signage system, we're going to want to get buy-in from the uh, IT department uh, as early as possible. Uh, get their buy-in because uh, you know how uh, the IT guys, uh, it, it, you know, the, be the best form of security is uh, uh, um, uh, denial of, of access. So uh, to prevent video from misbehaving on the network, well, don't allow any video on the network. So you really need to get uh, the IT folks on board, uh, probably going to want to set up a separate VLAN to separate the video traffic from the, the regular data traffic on the network. Um, but it, it gives us scalability. You know, that's, that's uh, um, um, you know, if you want to add more endpoints or expand to a new building, uh, it's very easy. The, the system, the, the IPTV and signage system grows as your network grows. So it's, it's a, a very easy, easy uh, expansion and scalability. So you see here, um, you know, this is what a typical IPTV head end looks like. It's nice and compact. It's in about 14 uh, rack units. Um, um, you know, uh, not everyone does IPTV in the most efficient manner. 
Um, some of the vendors out there on the market, uh, they want to sell you uh, a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of encoders. So let's just say you're doing a 48 channel uh, system. Uh, they want to sell you 48 encoders. You'd have to use 48 uh, individual uh, satellite receivers or cable set top boxes. And this picture here shows you, you know, an eight foot rack and probably another four feet of, of rack space. Um, these are all RF. Um, uh, these are all RF. Uh, let me get my pointer. Now, over here are the the, the um, uh, satellite receiver boxes. Uh, they're not really meant to be rack mounted, so there's these uh, kind of kludgy rack mount kits to put them in the rack. And then uh, below them are are very expensive encoders. So um, Vitovation's logic, uh, when we're deploying our Vitovation TV system, um, the 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 rule of thumb we follow is the content, whether it's coming from satellite or cable, it's already in digital form. It's already in an IP stream. It's either H.264 or in newer systems, it's, a, it's HEVC. So uh, some of the competing systems will take the, the, the content back to baseband video uh, and then spit it out of a, a receiver or a set-top box and then re-encode it. So, uh, uh, you know, a typical, uh, you know, a, cons a lower grade encoder starts at about $1,500 a channel for a decent encoder and a broadcast encoder is probably about $7,000 per channel. And if you're doing, you know, 48, 50, 100 channels, you can see how uh, the cost of encoders can escalate and, and you can um, um, need an enormous amount of rack space. Uh, so in the 48 channel example, you know, you need about 70 rack units to to do the old school approach to IPTV. Um, with uh, with uh, with Vitovation, we we now have new systems um, that can do uh, 138 channels of uh, of uh, of uh, 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 television um, in in three rack units. Um, we can also do um, 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 you know, and save the customer anywhere from fifty to three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So uh, sometimes when we're presenting numbers to a customer for a project, uh, they think there's a typo. They're they're like, why are four hundred thousand dollars worth of encoders missing from your proposal? Well, well, granted, I'd love to sell four hundred thousand dollars worth of encoders, but uh, if the customer doesn't need to buy the encoders. So so by using a COM 2000 or a COM 3000 from Technicolor, we can do 138 uh, uh, channels of, of direct TV in, in a 3RU appliance. Um, so, uh, you know, how is this all accomplished? You know, this sounds complicated. So, uh, you know, one, one of the things we do is, uh, Vitovation is a direct TV partner. So we, we, uh, we partner with direct TV uh, we can also work with Dish Network or your local cable company. Uh, most of our customers like DirecTV, uh, mostly because they're the best at sports. Uh, if you're um, building a facility or if you want a television system and you uh, really want the best uh, sports uh, coverage, the best sports uh, uh, packages, DirecTV is the way to go. Uh, Dish is a little stronger in some of the international programming. So you might want DISH, and then we integrate all the time local cable. Uh, we can even do um, over-the-air signals, but I'll, I have slides about that. I'll get into that. So, so here's the, uh, the magic behind our system or the, or the starting point or the, the center of our IPTV system when it comes to the live television content is an appliance made by Technicolor, and uh, it's called the COM3000. Uh, it, it basically takes up to 138 satellite receiver tuners and crams them into three rack units, which is amazing. So in that earlier slide, the old school approach would be to take 138 of these. Now that would even take, I, I don't even have the math here, but that would probably take, um, let's see, quad, quadruple what you see here. 
there'll be 138 of these individual satellite receivers that you'd need to mount in the rack. So we squeeze about uh, three or four 12 foot racks of gear into this 3RU little appliance here. And it's uh, made by Technicolor for DirecTV. Everyone, I'm sure you guys know the, the Technicolor brand. Uh, um, you know, they, they, they touch uh, numerous aspe aspects of uh, the cinema and television space that we all work in. So it's a, it's a, it's a great, uh, amazing uh, appliance made by Technicolor for uh, DirecTV. And we'll put this appliance in, put a satellite dish on the roof, and you have uh, uh, 138 channels of HD and 4K content available to you. So here's the dish on the roof. Um, you know, one, uh, one caveat when, when putting a dish on the roof, um, uh, some customers, uh, most installations, there already is some sort of a roof penetration, you know, a conduit going through the roof. Um, uh, it's not advisable for the, the tenant or Vitovation uh, to, to drill through a roof. We would want to get the, uh, whoever holds the warranty on the roof, whoever put the roof in, whoever has the warranty, we would have to contract them to put a conduit through the roof because then if there's a leak uh, we wouldn't want to do anything that voids the warranty so uh, uh, and it's not super expensive so you know we will just have to have the roof contractor come out and, and put that conduit in for us so uh, you know some customers uh, call us up every day and they'll be like uh, I have a cable TV system I heard IPTV is the new greatest and latest thing uh, I want to learn more about it. I'm not sure if I need it. Uh, you know, uh, problem with, with cable TV is, uh, you know, you're limited. You know, if you want to add video on demand, it's not that easy. Or if you want to integrate your own internal content, uh, that can be a challenge. Um, uh, particularly, uh, IPTV makes sense if you want to stream to alternate devices. Um, with, with IPTV, you can stream to the desktop. We can stream to PCs and Macs. So let's just say people in your enterprise need to watch television as part of their job. You're a, a media company, a financial uh, institution, so you need to watch uh, uh, financial news uh, uh, all day, or, or you're, uh, we're working with some um, uh, uh, first responders, police, fire, rescue, they need to know uh, what's happening in the news uh, locally, any natural disasters, uh, locally, statewide, and even globally. You know, if there's some sort of uh, widespread terrorist attack, uh, government agencies, state agencies need to be informed. So uh, television is, is a means of informing uh, your staff, your employees, your workers. So, and, and people want to receive these signals on multiple devices. So uh, on the computer, on the desktop, on a laptop, uh, on a smartphone, a tablet. And then, of course, uh, you know, an old school set-top box. You know, we, we have a, a line of uh, set-top boxes um, and then even smart TVs. Uh, you know, we work with uh, numerous uh, Samsung and LG. Um, they're more of a digital signage or a hospitality type of display. Not a, not a consumer smart TV. That won't work. Um, so just about any kind of endpoint, any kind of display, we can um, uh, get the signal, uh, deliver the signal to. Um, you know, and, and, and the TVs can be put anywhere, you know. So it's, it's uh, lobbies, break rooms, hallways, um, uh, sporting events. Uh, you know, you know I, we, we've all been there. Whenever you go to – at least this happens to me. Whenever I go to a ball game, a home run is always hit when I, go get the, when I get up to go to the bathroom or go get a hot dog. So – uh, having TVs uh, so you don't miss any of the game uh, near the concessions or even in the bathrooms uh, uh, is commonplace now. So, so you don't miss anything. You don't miss any of the action. Um, um, so I mentioned we can integrate direct TV, dish, uh, cable. We can also integrate over the air uh, television signals. Uh, believe it or not, um, I don't think over the air free television is going away anytime soon. Um, um, there'll always be uh, television uh, delivered. You know, if you're line of sight to your local TV uh, transmitter, 
you'll be able to get those signals for free. And a lot of times those signals are the highest quality. Um, uh, ATSC or over the air television can be as high as 19 uh, megabits, uh, 19.4 megabits per second. Now, they're multiplexing, uh, uh, multicasting uh, several television channels, but in theory, the channel, uh, the bandwidth could be, uh, the bit rate could be up to 19.4 megabits per second. So I'll give you an example. If you could get your local PBS channel over the air, the picture is going to look amazing. You're going to have really good quality. So this is another piece of the puzzle we can integrate over the air uh, into the into the offering. Um, so I kind of, you know, I have the bad habit of jumping ahead. I kind of, I, I'm beating a dead horse here, but, uh, uh, you know, so you don't limit yourself to one choice, direct TV, dish, cable, uh, satellite, over the air. Um, if there's something unique in your area, um, um, some content that we need to add, uh, we can bring it in. Um, we have one customer, they primarily want a direct TV. So we put in a COM uh, 2000 at the time. Uh, uh, Direct TV and, and Technicolor have migrated. Uh, they've end of life the COM 2000. So now we're working with the COM 3000. Uh, on this slide, you can see here 138 tuners. I, I had a typo on an earlier slide, but th this side, slide is accurate. So the COM 3000 now does 138 uh, uh, channels. And uh, at one customer where um, uh, we were working with Nickelodeon and for whatever reason, the Nickelodeon music channel was not available on DirecTV. I guess they didn't have a deal with DirecTV. So we 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 put in a single uh, dish network receiver and an inexpensive encoder. So there there are circumstances where we may want to put some encoders in. Um, you know, every application is different. Um, if you're only going to do a handful of channels, maybe you're going to do five or six channels. Maybe in that kind of a scenario, the COM 3000 might be overkill. So it might be worth putting in five or six uh, individual satellite receivers or individual cable uh, uh, set-top boxes and uh, five or six encoders. So there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, uh, one one uh, big caveat, and I'll, and I'll go into this a little bit more, the, the studios, the, the content creators have all – banded together and have required every distribution partner, whether it's cable, dish, direct TV, et cetera, they've required that they keep the video encrypted and secure. So uh, both the satellite providers, uh, direct TV and dish, use a form of uh, encryption called ProIdium. Uh, uh, Samsung uh, is also part of the consortium, so a lot of uh, Samsung displays support the ProIdium uh, encryption and, and decryption uh, standard. Um, Vidovation, not very many uh, uh, providers out there of IPTV support uh, ProIdium and Verimatrix. So the, the two, uh, actually there's three kind of industry standards when it comes to encryption. And, and three standards that are approved by uh, uh, DirecTV, for example. So uh, the first is ProIdium. So Pro, uh, DirecTV uses ProIdium so that when they go over the, the satellite, so of course uh, they support their own standards. So the ProIdium is, is, is supported. Uh, they also support Verimatrix. And um, all of this falls under what we call digital rights management. In other words, do you have the right to view or distribute this video, the, the, this content, this video content, or we call it DRM for short. So, so we support ProIdium, Verimatrix, and then uh, Cisco has uh, uh, a form of encryption called uh, Stadium Vision, and that's also uh, approved by DirecTV and the studios. So, Vidovation supports the two most popular forms of encryption: the ProIdium and the Verimatrix. So uh, a lot of our competitors are forced to do the approach of selling you the encoders because uh, that's their only uh, recourse. So they have to use individual satellite receivers and they have to sell you a couple of hundred thousand dollars of encoders because that's the only way they can legally distribute video. Um, so let me explain. So what the studios don't want is a first generation copy 
of this, the television stream being replicated. Uh, they're worried about bootlegging or, or piracy or, 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 or copyright infringement. If we decode the DirecTV or the cable uh, signal back to baseband and re-encode it, now it's a second generation. So then uh, the studios and DirecTV and DISH say that's okay because now it's no longer first generation. So there's two negatives to that scenario. Number one, you spend a couple of hundred thousand on encoders. And number two, uh, your video quality suffers. You know, we all know that, that uh, encoding a video a second time is going to degrade the quality of that video. So, of course, we all want to save money. Uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars savings is, is, is a win. And then uh, also maintaining higher fidelity, better video quality. That, that's all a win-win. So, so these are some of the caveats, the pitfalls that you need to, to watch out for. Uh, so in the way we use the COM 3000 to bring in 138 channels of direct TV, we have what we call a QAM to IP uh, gateway appliance. So what does that mean? In the way the COM 3000 has 138 satellite receivers, uh, this QAM to IP gateway has 60 cable TV tuners in three rack units. It's not quite as high a density as the COM 3000, but 60 channels is pretty good. So um, we did an installation recently where uh, it was a casino, uh, the Hard Rock Casino, and uh, they wanted to bring in um, uh, you know, direct TV content, a lot of the sports content, uh, but they also wanted certain feeds from Philadelphia, from New York, et cetera, uh, uh, or, or from Philadelphia, from Comcast. And uh, so they wanted to bring Comcast into the building. So the alternative would be to have 60, 60 Comcast set-top boxes and 60 enc encoders. By using this QAM to IP gateway, we condense all of that into three rack units, and then we don't need uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of encoders to re-encode the, the cable content. And just like the COM 3000, uh, this appliance supports uh, Proidium Verimatrix, and it integrates with uh, um, the Vitovation TV or the Vitovation uh, Enterprise IPTV and signage system. Uh, some of our competitors will you know, make flippant comments like, oh, well, we'll throw Verimatrix in. We'll throw in Proidium. You, you don't just throw it in. It's got to be integrated. You, you have to integrate the, the decryption engine for Proidium and or Verimatrix into your set-top box. The, the media player on your computer to, to, to go to the desktop, the engine that runs the, on your computer has to have the decryption capability of Verimatrix and Proidium. So your, your system really needs to be built from the ground up to support these different forms of digital rights management or DRM. So you just don't throw that in. It's not just uh, some trivial uh, add-on, et cetera. So uh, most of our customers uh, um, are media companies of some sort. Um, um, I'll give you some examples. Uh, we've done a lot of work with Viacom uh, and Nickelodeon. So they have studios. So they want to bring, executives want to bring uh, studio feeds into the television system, into the IPTV system. So uh, basically what we'll do in their master control, we'll put a couple of encoders on a couple of the outputs of their router, and uh, they can dial up any internal video feed, any studio feed uh, on the router and pipe it into the IPTV system. So, so we have these... Uh, uh, multiple optional channels, these studio feeds, and they can pick and choose what they want to broadcast on those channels. And in in uh, uh, film, uh, in cinema and television uh, production, secrecy is usually a big deal. Um, my my wife has gotten some of our my two kids to be uh, extras. They've gotten some uh, minor parts in in Hollywood for different television shows and. Uh, anyone on set, they, they either have to put their phone away or they'll uh, confiscate the phone or you got to put tape over the lens because they don't want any leaks. Someone will film 
something happening on the set or some actor will go into some tirade and somebody caught it on on their iPhone or their Android and you know that they want to prevent a leak so uh, our system gives uh, the studios the ability that these studio feeds only the authorized executives can see you know they may not want the entire staff to see what's going on on set because uh, they they could uh, uh, divulge that to the public before the show actually airs. So uh, other customers, you know, uh, casinos, um, they might want to bring in some digital signage channels. Um, um, we have a, a digital signage option as part of our system, uh, but if you have a digital signage player or brand that you're already using, uh, we won't force you to use our digital signage platform. We can bring it in. We would just assign it to a, a certain channel. Uh, so we can bring in, uh, like with the Hard Rock, they had a lot of media players. So being um, a music-themed uh, uh, establishment, uh, they had dozens of media players playing music videos. So uh, music content. Uh, uh, so uh, we just assigned those. Uh, we attached... Uh, uh, we put uh, we took the HDMI outputs of those media players, fed them into an HDMI encoder, and then uh, broadcast those on, on designated or dedicated channels for the uh, music videos or the media content. So whatever your your situation is, you know, um, uh, if if you have other systems that you prefer to use, we can integrate that. I, I think one important thing is our system is very very open. We have a, a documented API. If we need to integrate uh, with uh, with another system, um, um, a booking system, if it's a hotel, um, uh, et cetera, we, we're, we're, we're an open architecture. So here, I, I don't mean to scare people. Um, Vidovation is not the uh, anti-piracy police, uh, but uh, you know, if we come into your facility and we see something that may not be compliant, that's not our job, it's none of our business, but we will not put a system in that is not compliant. So, um, you know, DirecTV, high definition first generation DirecTV uh, and 4K first generation DirecTV cannot be distributed on the network in the clear. It has to be encrypted. So, uh, Vidovation, this is one of our strong suits. Uh, we're a very close partner with DirecTV and uh, uh, we are typical, I would say 80% of our deployments uh, use the Verimatrix DRM. Uh, that gives us the most versatility. Um, um, then uh, the, the other 20% of our employment uh, deployments will use uh, the native pro idiom that comes uh, from DirecTV. And uh, very few, if any of our competitors can, can uh, uh, facilitate both pro idiom and Verimatrix. Uh, so, uh, I'll give you an example like, uh, you know, why is uh, video on demand content? Um, this is more uh, your, your content, not so much, hey, I want to watch movies at work. Now, granted, if this was a hotel or hospitality, uh, video on demand would be more, more like that where you rent a movie to watch it in your hotel room. But for the enterprise, uh, uh, the video on demand, it's more your internal assets. So. Take Viacom, for example, they have a, a huge uh, asset management library and um, uh, they want to integrate that into the system. So, you know, they, they gave a scenario, you know, the writers are in the writer's room and they're trying to write a uh, script for the next uh, episode of some uh, sitcom they're working on. And they're like, you know, hey, this idea we, we have right now sounds very familiar for something we did in season one. Uh, I want to make sure we're not copying. Um, let's go look for that. So they'll go into the library. They can go find season one and 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 verify. Uh, um, uh, a lot of a lot of our customers, because they're media companies, they want to record uh, the live television and then play it back later for quality control. Or if the FCC comes to them and says, "Hey, uh, your closed captioning failed," uh, uh, you know, at 10 o'clock on such and such channel. So if they're recording the channels, they can prove uh, compliance to, to government agencies. So, so uh, having content in the system, um, 
think of the larger enterprise. There could be uh, HR compliance videos in there. You know, if there's some new, um, you know, sexual harassment training, HR training of some sort, and you need all the employees to watch these videos, um, the IPTV administrators can actually give HR a list of people that actually played and watched the whole video. If some people didn't play it, or they played half of it and shut it off, uh, in the analytics, we can tell HR will get a memo and say, you know, hey, these 100 employees did not finish or watch the video and they need to do so for compliance reasons. And then you can put the analytics into the into the HR file so you can prove to government agencies that, yes, in fact, all of our employees have watched all the compliance videos, et cetera. Um, so that that can be very helpful. So uh, there's two forms of recording. So I kind of touched on that. One where it might be for compliance purposes, as I mentioned. And if we were doing things for compliance, we might want to record in the head end. Um, if, if recording is very important to you, uh, it just might be easier and it's more scalable. We put a bunch of storage in the head end. Uh, and uh, when, when something, we can record every single channel. Or we can decide, um, you know, we want to record these Viacom channels for compliance purposes. And uh, so we don't run out of hard disk space. We say we want to keep it 30 days. So if, uh, you know, some FCC regulations uh, stipulate that, you know, uh, if there's some finable event or FCC is auditing you about some content violation, et cetera, or uh, an advertiser, you know, hey, our commercial didn't run, our commercial was chopped. Um, recording these channels for compliance purposes can be um, uh, uh, very important to you. And then there's the recording for 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 personal use. So, um, you know, uh, some enterprises take the approach: well, if our employees are working 80 hours a week, we're going to give them some entertainment channels. We're going to let them watch ESPN or so uh, if someone uh, wants to watch uh, the Sunday football game on Monday at work, they could set it up to record over the weekend and we can do uh, personal recording or time shift recording. If we don't do it in the head end and, uh, it's all, and maybe only a handful of employees want DVR capability, we can do it in the set top box uh, and, and not deploy a full head end based uh, 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 DVR capability. A uh, common thing in the enterprise is, uh, you know, piping in, um, uh, we can integrate uh, teleconferencing into the system. Um, a lot of times the conferencing is just on a different input on the on the television in the, in the conference room. You know, our set-top box will be like on HDMI 1 and the conferencing will be on HDMI 2. But we have some customers where they, they want to integrate different feeds or we have... Um, uh, customers that need, you know, more continuous connectivity, like a media company where they might have, you know, 24-7 connections between their New York and L.A. studios. And those channels could be dialed up to have a, a, a real-time conversation uh, through the IPTV system directly. So we've uh, facilitated that for some customers. Uh, then I touched on this before. If, if, you, if you have a, a signage, uh, system that you prefer or brand that you like to use, uh, we can integrate that. Uh, we have our own very high powered uh, digital signage capability uh, built into the system. We can do like L bars, we can have different zones, uh, you know, uh, virtually unlimited number of zones. Usually one of the zones is live television. You know, you want uh, the TV maybe uh, in, the, in the upper right corner and then different zones of information. Um, uh, um, we can bring in, feed, you know, RSS feeds, pull pull different news stories, uh, XML um, uh, feeds can be pulled in, and you know, different displays. Uh, you know, uh, you know, maybe you know, digital signage is probably not appropriate on the display in an executive's office. He doesn't want commercials in his office; he just wants to watch TV. But the televisions in the in the break area. Uh, might have HR related information, you know, hey, we have a, a special uh, uh, entree in the, in the commissary today or uh, HR notices, that kind of thing. 
Um, or, or very importantly, I, I have a slide, again, I'm jumping ahead, but there's a slide about emergency alerts, um, public safety, um, you know, alerts for fire, or, you know, active shooter alerts, et cetera. Th those are very important things to integrate into our system to keep your employees safe. And I, as I mentioned before, you know, with, a, with an RF-based system or uh, some of our competitor systems, they're, they're more closed. They're, 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 they're not an open architecture. So uh, we try to keep our system as, as open as possible for uh, future scalability. Our system is also very secure. We have, uh, for you IT folks out there, we have an LDAP uh, module which ties into Active Directory. So what does that mean? Um, so when someone uh, uh, logs into their computer um, and they open up the media player, the media player knows, okay, this is Jim Jaquetta's computer. He has executive access. He can see the studio feeds. He can see uh, security feeds, et cetera. Uh, he has access to the full channel lineup. Now, uh, my admin maybe doesn't have as much access as I do. Uh, they log into their computer. Um, the system knows uh, their Active Directory credentials, so they only see a limited channel lineup or a more limited channel lineup. So uh, uh, the IT department will love that, that everything bundles in or seamlessly integrates with, uh, with the network security network policies. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's the IT guys that keeps, uh, keeps our world running. Um, that's why these guys and gals get paid the big bucks. We can't live without them. Uh, we, Vitovation is very hands-on with your IT team. Uh, we encourage them to be involved in the, in the process uh, early on. You know, we, we have to make sure the, the network is multicast enabled, that IGMP, uh, Internet Group Multicast Protocol, is turned on. So, um, um, so what does that mean? Uh, for you people that don't know the difference between a multicast and a unicast. So uni, a unicast video stream is uh, a stream from point A to point B. Only one person can, or one, uh, was, there's a single source and a single destination. So for, so for example, on TV number one, uh, if it was a unicast session, uh, only TV number one can see that, that, uh, that stream. That stream can't be shared across multiple TVs. When we do multicast, uh, it's a different type of stream, and that same stream can be uh, shared uh, with a thousand endpoints or thousands of endpoints. So, what does that translate to? So, if if uh, a thousand people in the organization were watching ESPN at the same time, and we were set up in a unicast environment, there would have to be a thousand streams of ESPN going on the network to the different displays. If we do a multicast stream of ESPN, there's a single stream and we all watch the same stream. So all a thousand people watch that same stream. So multicast is actually preferred uh, a method of, um, of distribution. We have one customer, for security reasons, they just will not allow multicast on their network. It's a, uh, one, one of the large social media networks. And uh, we had to set up a media server to serve out all the channels individually. So when a TV tunes to a certain channel, a stream is sent to each display. Uh, but their network is big enough and robust enough to handle all those simultaneous sessions. So we can do a unicast system if we have to, but multicast is preferred. Um, again, I, I won't read everything to you guys on this slide, but this is something we would uh, this would be part of the discussion we would have with your IP, uh, I'm sorry, IT department um, to discuss, uh, you know, how to set up the uh, Internet Group uh, multicast protocol. Um, um, you know, um, a misbehaving multicast stream uh, would be a great way to attack a network, and the IT guys are, are very conscious of this. So. Uh, everything needs to be very well documented, very well controlled to make sure a rogue multicast stream is not let loose on the network that could cause some damage. But our IT team will work very closely with uh, you and your customer's IP, uh, IT team to, to make sure uh, everything is done properly and secure 
and that the network is safe and that there's no problems. Um, so yeah, again, here's some here's some of the the requirements. Uh, I'll, I'll share this. Uh, actually, this deck is is shared in the handouts. I think in in the in the um, uh, somewhere on, on, on the screen, there should be a link, uh, something labeled handouts. Uh, you guys can download this PowerPoint deck as well as a catalog on IPTV. So I, I won't read this all to you, but you know, these are some of the things we would discuss with your, with your IT uh, department. Um, um, so yeah, I, I, I already, see again, I, I, I jumped the gun. I, 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 I did a spoiler on this slide. So this is the slide about the LDAP module and integrating with Active Directory, uh, which your IT guys are gonna love. Again, it's optional. You know, the, I, the IPTV and digital signage system can kind of sit on its own, on its own VLAN, uh, separate from your, your corporate network. Um, you know, some organizations prefer that. You know what, I, I just want it on its own VLAN or sometimes they even physically put it on a separate network, physically. So you have the choice. We, you don't have to go this route, but if you want a more integrated, uh, managed approach, uh, we can do that. So the, um, um, the system is fully customizable. Um, we can, um, um, everything is based on HTML5. So typically what we do is, um, we mimic the, the elements, the colors, the graphics, usually on the customer's website is a place to start. Uh, you know, uh, working with Nickelodeon and Viacom being a media company, uh, there was no guessing. They, gave, they told us exactly how it was gonna look and they gave us the logos and, you know, the color specifications, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what, what customers like is they can modify the, this whole backdrop uh, uh, can be modified. You know, here's an example of a hospitality, uh, a hotel near, near. Uh, you know, had a picture of a nearby mountain in the background. Uh, Viacom wanted more corporate look. Uh, Nickelodeon, of course, has the orange, the orange goop uh, on on their background. You know, more more whimsical than than the corporate interface. But all this can be customized. Th think of it like a web page. We can pretty much uh, change or modify anything you want. Uh, uh, I touched on this before. We can we can integrate uh, the security feeds. So you probably don't want you know your everyday employees uh, tying into the security system, but you you may want executives to have access to this, and, and certainly security personnel. Um, you may not want your security people watching ESPN because that might be a distraction. So you might want to block that or not give them access to that. But you know maybe they need to watch the news. They need to you know if there's some uh, uh, event, some, some police activity uh, locally, they may need to watch local news channels or local TV to see if there's anything breaking news uh, nearby uh, for employee safety, public safety, but certainly have the, um, the security feeds uh, integrated into the system. Then, uh, you know, another thing, you know, uh, customers ask us every day, like, oh, what do we do? We're not ready for 4K yet, but uh, we will be down the road. Uh, we could put set-top boxes in today that support 4K, or we can mix and match. You know, maybe every display doesn't need to be 4K in the enterprise. So, uh, DirecTV um, um, is not 100% 4K yet. You know, they'll have sporadic broadcasts in 4K. Uh, cable probably has more 4K coming through, uh, so we can mix and match, and we can migrate to 4K. So. In the case of uh, you know mix and match, uh, we would need to have two different streams on the network. You know we need a 4K stream and an FHD stream uh, for for displays that are the two different formats. So if you do want multiple formats of content, uh, we'd have just have more streams or more flavors uh, of those streams on the channels available to you. Uh, we've done quite a few um, uh, sports stadiums. Uh, live event stadiums and um, one of the most common um, uh, food services at convention center stadiums is Aramark. Uh, they, they're, they're like one of the major national, even global uh, food service providers. And uh, we've uh, integrated our API with the Aramark API so that, uh, I'll give you an example, um, VIPs in the executive suites at a baseball stadium, football, basketball, et cetera, hockey, uh, they can order food right from the TV. 
So uh, we can do things where it's just simple, where you know we just push a web page. So a menu will just scroll, and they got to dial a phone to order. Or we can even do it where they can you know press on things and and order things in a, in a more automated approach. Uh, so we can we can do things that are that are kind of uh, sim simplistic uh, to to all kinds of custom modification uh, custom features using the API. Um, one pitfall with with stadiums is um, a lot of times uh, you might have a, a field of view of the field as well as the the televised video on the internal TV channel. So I'll give you an example. So you're in the VIP suite and you're watching the ball game is right in front of you. You see the, the, the baseball field. Uh, there's a hit. You know, you hear the crack of the bat. Um, it's awkward if the TVs are like three seconds behind the action on the field. So uh, minimizing latency, um, we can get the latency down to a couple of hundred milliseconds, uh, tenths of seconds. Uh, um, to uh, minimize that latency so that uh, uh, there's not an awkward, uh, the, 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 so the television system doesn't seem like it's lagging several seconds behind the live action that's also in front of you. Uh, now granted, you, you may wanna see that crack of a bat and see the replay. So you could be DVRing the game on the screen above you and then um, um, you know, hit the back button and, and see that, that, that uh, uh, shot all over again, but you know if you're if you're dialed into the internal feed, they're probably going to do an instant replay on the in-house in feed uh, anyway, where you you wouldn't need to do it yourself. But um, as you can see in these photos, another awkward thing is so here's a concession stand and there's several TVs. If these TVs are not in sync with each other, that looks very awkward. That you know you have TVs with different you know crack of the bat, crack of the bat. You know that 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 that's an awkward or uh, 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 customer complaint if the TVs are not in sync, and, and we solve all that. So you know, to so to summarize, you know, the, the key advantage is you know when does IPTV make sense? Um, if you're happy with your cable system and your cable boxes, and you don't need if you don't need to stream to, to computers, to set top boxes, smart TVs, phones, and tablets, maybe what you have is good enough. Um, uh, but if you also need to integrate digital signage or you want to use our digital signage module, that's going to be more difficult to do with a cable system. Uh, adding emergency alerts to keep uh, people informed uh, of, uh, you know, active shooters, fire, danger, earthquakes, fires, et cetera. Um, you know, integrating your own live content, your own video on demand content. Uh, um, um, is an uh, easy add-on, and then having recording or PVR. Now, all these features I mentioned, you don't have to order them from day one. System is scalable. Uh, we have many customers, they'll buy a basic system as a starter, and then the customers will be like, you know, we really want to start recording stuff, or we're getting a lot of requests for video on demand. Uh, we can add these systems later. We can add uh, capabilities later. So, so the system is, is, is upgradable, is scalable. Um, you know, the other thing to watch out for is, you know, doing proper digital rights management, um, uh, particularly Viacom and Nickelodeon. Um, you know, they read some of the legal language that comes from some of the studios and being a content creator themselves, they were like, you know, we want to design the system properly from the ground up. We love that Vitovation is, is using uh, Veramatrix DRM. Uh, we don't we don't want to cut any corners. We don't want to diminish uh, signal quality, and of course, we don't want to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on, on unnecessary encoders. Um, the system will keep your employees safe and informed. Uh, if you're uh, an entertainment center, a sports arena, will keep your fans engaged so they don't fall asleep. Uh, and and an IP system, IPTV system is uh, easier to deploy and maintain. Um, you know, your IT department can even be in a different location and the system can be managed remotely. It's, it's very uh, uh, scalable, low cost of ownership, extremely uh, flexible and customizable. Uh, uh, 
electronic program guide, you know, so how do I know what's on at what time? Um, you know, we have a fully integrated EPG or electronic program guide. Again, I, you know, I covered all this stuff, but uh, broadcast scheduling, you know, we can schedule when we want to record things. You could even have um, an HR video set to play at 8 a.m. every Monday, you know, so there's some uh, uh, you can do uh, a scheduling of different broadcasts, uh, uh, kind of uh, an automated inside or internal uh, television system that you guys would run. Um, so yeah, so I covered all this. So um, um, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Let me see. I've been going about an hour. Let me let me keep going. If you some of you guys drop off, I understand. It's uh, thank God it's Friday. But uh, appreciate you guys coming and joining us. If you guys got to drop off, I, I, I understand. Um, I'll keep going. I got a few more slides. Um, so this is kind of what the system looks like. So, you know, you have a satellite or over-the-air cable coming in. There, there might be your, your tuners or your, your gateway appliances. Um, the video needs to be encrypted to be compliant. You have some recording appliances to time shift or DVR. Um, uh, you know, usually all of this is, is you know, this kind of, these are, these are modules. Um, you know, this is all like one appliance. This, this whole area is an appliance. This is an appliance, but, uh, it's just a, a, a contrarian way of looking at the system. Um, um, um yeah, th this gets into some of the details. So, uh, a common question we get asked is, uh, uh, how many endpoints, what's, what's the limitation on the endpoints? And, it's not really a limitation of our system. It's more of a Windows limitation. We use a, a Windows uh, Server 2012, and uh, that currently has a limit of 5,000 uh, 5, endpoints uh, or 5,000 um, endpoint sessions. So uh, if you need more than 5,000, we would just have a second uh, middleware uh, server that would slave off of each other to give you that capability. Um, you guys can look at some of the data sheets to get, uh, or the catalog to get some of these specifications. Uh, I'll kind of go through this pretty quickly. Um, uh, one of the set-top boxes, our, our preferred uh, vendor of choice is a company by the name of Amino. Um, you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, companies like Cisco, they, they have a, a IPTV system. And um, one of the complaints we hear is that uh, the set-top box is really just a small computer and it has a spinning hard drive and a fan. And, um, you know, some of these environments are, are, are relatively hostile, like um, um, there's snow and freezing rain in the winter, um, there's moisture, there's harsh environment. So a computer with a spinning hard drive and a fan is not really ideal for these uh, harsh environments. And then also, you know, in my engineering experience, you know, something with moving parts has a life expectancy. A fan, a spinning fan, two, three, four years maybe at most, that fan's going to need to be replaced. The, the bearings are going to wear out. So uh, one of the biggest complaints we see is that, you know, the, the Cisco or these other set-top boxes are very expensive and they fail a lot. Uh, the Amino has no moving parts. It's, it's all hardware based. Um, um, it's just, you know, one circuit board. There's no fan. Um, there's no spinning hard drive. And it's extremely resilient, extremely reliable. I mean, we have customers that have been using an Amino for the better part of 10 years without a failure. They, ju they just go, they just work. And what we like about it as a vendor is it's highly programmable. So we put the firmware on the platform to do the Verimatrix decryption, to do the Proidium decryption. Uh, we put our software on it, so it's a, it's a very robust target. Uh, the software that comes with it out of the box from Amino is very rudimentary, but uh, uh, it's, it's a great platform. It's a, it's a, um, a, a Windows, uh, I'm sorry, a, a, it's, um, um, a browser based platform so everything you see on the screen is a form of html5 so that's what that's its power that's what makes it uh, 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 flexible and perfect for iptv um, 
I'm going to touch on some some applications. Uh, I'll, I'll wrap this up uh, soon, guys, in 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 a few minutes here. But uh, you know, for for Viacom, uh, this was kind of a mixed use. It was for the business and the enterprise, but also for media. So uh, they wanted the system to go to uh, TVs, displays, PCs, tablets. Um, they didn't. They're, they're not using any smart TVs. Um, so we went with. Um, Samsung, uh, more generic uh, commercial TVs, and we just hid the set-top box behind the, uh, the display or behind the TV. And then we use like a little infrared eye to get the infrared to control the set-top box, and we, we glue it to the bottom edge of the, uh, of the, of the TV so you can remote control the, the, the set-top box and the TV from a distance. Uh, um, you know, at a sporting venue, we want to avoid this guy who's sleeping here. He's got the newspaper over his head. He's not not engaged with the game. So we want to keep your fans engaged. Uh, um, you know, we want to put, uh, 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 you know, every sporting venue has their internal house feed. You know, you got the kissing cam coming up and, and different antics between innings, the seventh inning stretch, et cetera, or when there's a home run or a or a touchdown, et cetera. You know, you want to catch all that action. Uh, hospitality in casinos and hotels and resorts. Um, there's, there's, uh, you know, integrating with um, um, uh, the back end, the billing systems. Um, we've done a lot of work with casinos. I mentioned the Hard Rock Casino. Uh, the, the Hard Rock bought the Trump Taj Mahal and the Trump Casino in Atlantic City. Uh, they turned it into an amazing, beautiful facility. They, they gutted the whole, they gutted both properties, combined them into one huge uh, hard rock uh, property. And we did uh, several hundred displays on the casino floor uh, um, uh, and integrated direct TV and, and Comcast cable uh, into, and these uh, digital, um, these music media player channels as well into the system. Uh, um, healthcare or hospitals, you know, um, one of the big problems in healthcare is insurance companies will actually uh, charge a hospital or, or will deduct money they receive if a patient is readmitted in 30 days. The logic is the hospital or the doctors didn't do their job properly the first time. So if someone is readmitted uh, within 30 days, um, um, that costs the hospital money. Uh, they get less money from the insurance company. So a television system with video on demand, uh, we could, we, we've we done projects where you push educational videos to the patient before they leave. Uh, Mr. Smith, this is what you're going to have to do post-op. Here's uh, here's the meds you're going to need to take. Here's the, this is how the wound gets cleaned, et cetera, et cetera, to avoid that 30-day bounce back. Uh, um, so things like that, uh, we, we can even facilitate systems where they get these videos on their phone. And even when they're at home for 30 days, they can still access the library of videos from the hospital uh, on, on their phone, on the system uh, uh, to prevent that 30 day bounce back. So pretty much the sky's the limit. You know, I'm sure you guys will have uh, unique workflows, unique uh, needs, uh, uh, we can support virtually any application. Uh, we, we love customizing the system. Um, I mentioned having, you know, synchronous video. Um, we've done some military type applications where, you know, uh, uh, keeping video uh, synchronous, you know, time stamping, et cetera, uh, is very important uh, for, for security, et cetera. Um, 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 you know, keeping, um, we're working with a couple of uh, state police agencies on deploying a statewide IPTV and, and information, uh, you know, to keep all the, um, the different state police departments, you know, HQ and all the different barracks around the state informed. Uh, conferencing is a big part of that. But if there is a natural disaster or, or a, um, a police uh, event or a terrorist attack, et cetera, uh, instantly, every uh, the the police in the field as well as at at command are, are, can be uh, kept informed and and abreast of what's happening. Uh, you know, colleges and universities, you know, higher education, 
uh, television systems. Uh, there's two aspects of it. One, one could be for uh, the dorms for entertainment purposes for the students, uh, but the, the more important uh, side is on the on the e-learning or the educational side that uh, television and um, you know, recordings of lectures, say that a student has a conflict or they can't make it to a certain lecture, the 8 a.m. lecture, um, or they were out late the night before, uh, teachers can make lectures available on the video on demand system so the student can, can re-watch a lecture later on um, uh, at, the, uh, at their own time. Or, or distance learning, you know, uh, um, um, universities now have, you know, online versions of their education uh, uh, programming, et cetera, so they can watch from uh, um, from home or from a remote distance. So, you know, what is Vidovation? You know, uh, Vidovation, we're, we specialize in, in moving uh, live television. Uh, um, we specialize in the, in the transmission, contribution, and distribution of live television. Uh, you know, we do this over, today's discussion was mostly IP networks. We'll do it over IP networks. We can do it wirelessly. We can go over cellular or bonded cellular. We can go over fiber. Uh, we'd love to hear from you about any type of project you're working on. Uh, Vidovation is very uh, consultive in our process. Uh, we'll consult with you. We'll help you design a system uh, that meets your business goals uh, and that will be uh, within your budget. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're constantly aware uh, that uh, not every customer has the same level of budget. So we'll design a system that fits your workflow and fits your, your budget. So that kind of wraps things up. Um, you know, here's some of the stuff we've been doing lately. You know, I mentioned uh, uh, Nickelodeon and Viacom. Uh, we've done a lot of work in the past with the NHL. Uh, we do this uh, crazy cop show called Live PD on A and E. Uh, we have two new um, uh, shows coming out. Um, um, uh, well, actually, I think one show has been announced. It's the first responder show that's coming out. So they're going to be following around uh, the fire department. Uh, you know, uh, uh, more more of a, a rescue. You know, the, the fire department, the ambulance, the EMTs, et cetera. Um, and uh, these crazy shows really put our technology to the test. Uh, a lot of the technology we use was meant for news, for doing a simple stand up on the courthouse steps. Uh, uh, Vidovation and our partners like Avi West, we've been able to broadcast live from police cars going 130 miles an hour down the freeway in a high speed chase. Um, we've also worked with uh, uh, one of the largest uh, Native American owned casinos in North America, the Mystic Lake uh, Casino and Hotel uh, uh, in, uh, in Minnesota. So uh, we'd love to help you with your applications. And uh, here's some contact information for you guys. Um, I don't see any questions. Let me just take a quick peek here. Don't see any questions, but uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, here's my direct email, uh, jimj at vidovation.com is my direct email. Uh, you can connect with me on social media. Uh, I'm sure many of you guys are coming out to uh, NAB in a few weeks. So uh, we'll be in booth C2305 in the upper part of Central Hall by the front door, very, very close to the lobby. So we'd love to see you folks there to continue the discussion for any uh, enterprise IPTV and digital signage uh, projects you guys might be working on. And uh, be sure to download the handouts. I don't know if you guys see that on the side here. I think you just click on it and you can download it. So uh, unless you folks have any questions, I'll, I'll let you get back to your Friday. And thank you so much for joining today and uh, have a great weekend. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out to Vidovation. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.